Hello everyone, I'm your host to Elusive with a special treat for you all. I've managed to get into the closed beta for our Final Fantasy Dissidia NT and spent a great deal of time in practice mode and also in online matchmaking against other players. From what I've experienced so far, this is a pretty solid demo and I feel like the game plays a lot like J-Star's Victory Versus, which is another 3 on 3 brawler type game with a lot of crazy elements added into the mix. I mean heck, it even has a similar objective in every single battle which is to get at least 3 KOs. In this introduction, I'm going to talk about my experiences with the demo, what needs to be polished, any concerns I may have, and also include a mini guide on how to win more matches against other players. When the full game comes out, I'll gladly go into further depth on how to increase those chances as well. So from what I've experienced, the netcode seems to be pretty good. I've rarely played through any lagging matches while I battle against other people, but to be fair, my PS4 is on a wired connection, so I can't say that everyone will have the same lagless experience as everyone else. And thankfully, the game runs at a solid 60 frames per second, even when you're not running the game on a PS4 Pro, which is ideal for any kind of fighter out there. Even with all of these intensive graphics that pop in and out of the screen, the frame rate never slowed down for me. The only time the frames were not at 60 was during cutscenes, but that's due to the cutscenes being pre-rendered, which is perfectly fine. The user interface is pretty nice as well. It does its job in telling the player what it needs to know throughout the course of the battle, and it doesn't clutter the screen to the point where it can be a distraction, which is exactly how a user interface should be. With that being said, however, let me tell you right now to all of you who've spent their days playing this title on the PSP. If you're like me and you're getting into this game off of the PSP's controls, mechanics, overall structure of the match, oh and did I mention the controls? FORGET EVERYTHING YOU KNOW! This game plays differently from both Dissidia and Dissidia Dual Decium, starting with a brand new control layout that will throw you off of your game for a while. And since this is a demo, there is no option to switch your controls. Hopefully. The full game will allow you to do so, though I'm probably going to leave the default setting alone at this point since I'm already used to the game's new control layout by now. For starters, the jump and brave attack buttons have been swapped, so you'll need to get used to your brave attacks being mapped to the X button rather than the circle button, which I found to be really weird. I can understand remapping the buttons for the character's movement, such as dashing for example, but why would you ever need to swap the brave attack and jump buttons layout, when it's been the same for the past few games, especially since the HP button is still mapped to square. I've lost a great deal of online matches because every time I would go in for the offense, I end up jumping instead of attacking when my opponent presents a punishable opportunity. So my advice for you is to stay in practice mode for at least an hour or two until you get it down to muscle memory. Trust me, the practice will make it all better for you. Moving on from that, you no longer have to hit the triangle or the X button and R1 to dash. The game just requires you to hold down the R1 button and you'll keep dashing until you run out of stamina, which is an improvement already and very fitting for a game like this. Dodging is pretty much the same as the PSP version, except they remove the iframes from them. So while dodging an attack is riskier in this title, it's also very rewarding because it allows you to punish much easier. Blocking is also easier to pull off in this game since it gives you a shield similar to Smash Bros. The trade off however is that you'll no longer be able to parry attacks like you did in the PSP version and guarding can knock you back. Plus, like in Smash Bros, if your shield eats too many hits, it'll break and you'll be stunned for a good while. The R2 and L2 buttons will allow you to switch your targets, which is something you'll want to get into the habit of doing since this is a team oriented game. Also, the triangle button is used to access your EX skills. Make sure you abuse them as they are pretty useful as well. One other thing I must also point out is that the characters themselves function differently from their PSP versions. Cloud for example can charge both his brave and HP attacks for more range and damage. 
Zidane can steal from his foes and debuff them at the same time while he's attacking them. Bards can level up his attacks individually throughout the course of the battle so as long as he lands their hits and the list goes on. So while the characters play a tiny bit like their PSP versions, they all feel like new, fresh characters that you'll want to sit down and learn how to use properly if you want to secure a victory. Also, the characters are classified under four different types of classes. Vanguards, which are tanky and can dish out the pain. Assassins, who are mobile and pretty combo heavy. Marksmen excel at long range combat. And specialists are pretty much a jack of all trades. So I'd mess around with all of them and figure out which one really fits your playstyle. But now on to the mechanics. If you want to survive in these battles, which I assume you do, you'll want to use all the resources the game has in order to win. The map is one of your best friends as it tells you where everything is including who's targeting you or the summoning core. Those shiny beams that are pointing towards your character are there to let you know that someone has you in their sights and you should be aware of them when you're either chasing another player or pursuing objectives. And if there's more than one beam pointed at you, well, I hope you're good at running away. I know I said this earlier, but make use of your EX skills. Everyone is equipped with two spells they can cast which can either buff the party or debuff the enemy, and one unique EX skill that is exclusive to that character. Don't forget their existence as they can give you an upper hand in battle. Also, be aware that this is a team oriented game. Do not stick to 1v1s throughout the whole fight. Switching targets effectively can really help your team out in the long run, especially when you have a teammate who's being ganged up on. Remember, you only need 3 knockouts to win, so get them by any means. It's also a good idea not to chase an opponent for too long. If you see they are running away too much, you're better off just switching targets and pouncing on another player. One other thing I'd recommend is not to save up your brave points. Sure, you can get away with that in the first two Dissidia titles, but in here, you can lose your brave points very quickly, especially when the enemy team notices your numbers. So my advice to you is to do your best bread and butter, then use them brave points up or lose them. Finally, the biggest thing you'll definitely want to prioritize, which I am not seeing enough people do surprisingly, is focus on that summoning core. Getting your summon out can really turn the match in your favor. Even if you're in the lead, you'll still want to secure that core so your enemies can't make a comeback. But just because you got your summon out doesn't mean you can take it easy as you can still lose a game at any given time. So even when your summon is out, always remain on your toes because you'll never know when that victory might be stolen from you. All in all, this was a pretty fun demo to play and I can't wait to see what the full game is going to bring out. I know that we'll likely be able to customize our characters, move sets, and EX skills and if they do bring gear into this game, I feel like they should strictly stick to a single player mode or matchmaking against friends similar to how gear is handled in Smash 4 and Injustice 2, where gear is not allowed to be used online or players agree to turn them off. But anyway, that's all I have to say about this game. Stay tuned because I do have some pretty nice clips to show off if you want to see more gameplay footage without me talking over most of it. And for those who have played the beta, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys later. Peace! Piercing your cool can be. I apologize.
Don't forget this. I couldn't have done this without you. Greetings. The name's Bartz. The name's Bartz. The name's Bartz. You would do well not to misjudge us. I'll send you packing in no time. The name's Bartz! Bartz to the rescue! Great! Believe that we can win, and we shall. We can take them, no problem. I wish your teamwork was that good. Sparks! Power ever return. Whoops.